So it wasn't too long ago that we were in uh, South Carolina on the media drive of the all new Kona. And we have a first drive video of this compact crossover already on the channel. And quite frankly, I didn't do a great job in that video. I don't really think I did the vehicle justice in producing that video. And quite frankly, it's difficult for me to produce videos on media drives on the go like that. That's neither here nor there because this week I've spent the entire week driving the all new Kona. I've been a fan of the Kona since it was first launched. I really like it. I still like it. We'll go ahead and say that. Let's go ahead and dive into this one, see what's going on here. I'll give you all the specs that I can and I'll give you as much of my opinion as I can. Let's go. All right, and we'll start off with the easy part, talking about the trims offered here in the Kona. You have an SE at the base, an SEL, an inline, and a limited trim. So if you know about the Kona from the past, there's also an in, which the inline is mostly an aesthetic package. The in is where the actual performance comes in. There's not an in of the new Kona so far, but there should be soon. Also, when we drove the Kona in South Carolina, the all EV version had not been out yet, and now it is. This is not the EV version. This is the gas version. It is a limited, so it's a 2024 limited. We'll touch on the engine that it has and all of that stuff soon, but first let's take a look at the exterior design. So like I mentioned, this is an all new Kona, all new body style, all new interior. So there's quite a bit new here and we did go over a lot of the new styling during our first drive video. But I wanted to start this one off talking about that paint color. It is flashy, it does stand out. It's a dark and gloomy day today, but uh, there's no denying that uh, this highlighter looking color really stands out. It's called Neoteric Yellow, and with all the black cladding and everything, I think it looks really good. We do have full LED headlights and daytime running lights on this because it's the limited. All the lower trims have combination lights, but these are all LED here. And of course you have that large strip LED at the tip of the hood and then the actual headlights are down more into the bumper, keeping the same aesthetic that the original Kona had. We do have a big open grill, and you do have electronic grill shutters in there to help regulate the air. One of my biggest gripes that I had in the first drive video and first taking a look at this design, and even the previously designed Kona, is that they've strayed away from the original Kona with its more boxy and kind of rugged look that it had to being more curvy and uh, more sleek look that it has now. Obviously that helps with aerodynamics and fuel economy. I quite like the original Kona a bit better and I said that in my first drive video, but I can say it's still a great looking car and uh, still gets heads turned, especially in this color. Our wheels are 19 inch alloy wheels. And again, these are offered only on the limited. Other trims come with 17 inch wheels. The side mirrors are body colored. Again, a part of the limited trim. You do have integrated turn signals. You have the chrome strip that follows the belt line as well as the large cladding. Some people think cladding is offensive on a crossover. I don't. I think it looks fine, especially here where it's molded and shaped to fit a lot of the contours of the body. It looks very purposeful and not just thrown on as an afterthought. Hyundai loves to do weird designs to break up the side of the vehicle. This one definitely has a very sharp kind of Z shape in it. This helps the front look even more sporty and the rear look even more bulky. I quite like it. The rear end almost reminds me of the Kia EV6. We do have roof rails on here. I think it would look really good with some nice crossbars or a tray up on top, especially if you had some beefier tires than these all season tires. In the rear is a full LED tail light that spans the entire width of the rear end. And then of course you also have your lights down on the bumper. You have the Hyundai badge, the Kona nameplate there on the hatch and the H-Track badge by the 1.6T badge telling you that this is an all wheel drive with the 1.6 turbo. 
which we'll look at in just a sec. And overall, I really do like the design of this thing, especially for what it is, for the size of the vehicle. But with that, let's go ahead and move on to the hatch and take a look at the cargo volume. So first off, this is a power lifting hatch, which again is only on the limited trim. You do have the feature where you can walk up to it with the key in your pocket and it will automatically open after a few beeps. It's a good feature and you don't have to worry about swiping your foot underneath it to find a specific sensor or anything like that. But for now, we'll just pop it the uh, traditional way and take a look here at the cargo space. And being a compact crossover for the Kona, cargo is important. You're looking at 25.5 cubic feet of cargo volume behind the second row, which is pretty good. Got plenty of room to throw a bunch of equipment, no matter what you're doing. Definitely plenty of room for grocery shopping. Our little bit of camera gear fits no problem. And if you need more, you can fold the rear seats down and get up to 63.7 total cargo volume for the Kona. You do have a tray that lifts up and you got a spare tire down here with jack and all of that, which is great. But other than that, not a ton of features or gimmicks back here in the trunk. So with that, let's go ahead and close it up. We'll next go pop the hood and take a look at the engine that powers this limited 1.6T right now. All right, and as mentioned plenty of times already, this is the premium engine option. It is the 1.6 liter turbocharged engine matched up to an eight speed automatic transmission. It pushes 190 horsepower, 195 pound feet of torque, and it does have the H-Track all wheel drive system from Hyundai. Now, all trim levels have the option of the H-Track, but paired with this engine and the eight speed automatic transmission, I think is your best bet for the Kona. Now, like I said, we drove this thing in South Carolina, all on open roads. We drove the original a couple of times with a little bit of off-road. I've driven other Hondas with the H-Track all-wheel drive system. It's a decent system. It's not gonna blow your socks off. It's no Jeep. It's not a Toyota 4Runner. If you're looking at doing serious off-roading, this is not your bet. But if you're doing some camping, and some regular camp trails, needing some a little bit of off-road. If you put a little bit beefier tires on this, it can definitely handle some stuff. The SE and SEL come with a two liter naturally aspirated in line four, pushes 174 horsepower, and is a decent engine in its own right, but uh, this one is super solid. We'll talk more about how it drives here in a few, but first let's jump in and take a look at the tech and the interior, and then we'll take it for a drive. All right, we're here in the Kona. Again, this is limited trim. We have the black on black interior. We do have really nice H-Tech leatherette seating in a great black on black motif. Let me go ahead and pick you up and I'll run you through the full interior. Now, I do think the interior portion of what we did in our first drive video was probably the best portion of it. So if you already saw that and wanna skip over some of this, go for it, but I'm gonna run through as much as possible because this will probably get more views than that original one did. Let's just go through it. So we do have these nice, really nice leather at seats, perforated, have a nice pattern in there. It does have black stitching, so no contrast at all, just all black. And you can see that throughout the rest of the cabin, black on black for the doors, black on black for the dash. You do have some LED lighting that helps at night. The passenger does have this little tray here for something like your phone or something, but it is not sticky. So your phone will slide in there if you don't have kind of a sticky case. But I did utilize that during our first drive when we were traversing back roads in South Carolina. I had the phone charging and uh, sitting in that little tray there. We have this slit here with the AC vent in it and then AC and heat vents right here. There are no badge or name plates for it, but this does have the Bose premium audio system in it. Let's go ahead and kick it on. You'll see the dual 12.3 inch screens here. 
obviously uh, this one is a touch screen you do have different uh, driver settings and driver modes on here navigation system and a slew of other features that you can go through here i really do like hyundai's system here especially after being in a, a couple of mazda vehicles even the new toyota vehicles that have a really nice system i do like hyundai's even better everything's easy to get to easy to understand and really easy to touch to navigate below that screen is a large chrome brushed chrome look area that you have all your media physical buttons including your hazard lights and that push button start below that is your ac and heat controls all nice physical buttons with the little screen there moving down from that is an array of charging options all usb type c you've got a cool little pop out for your accessory port here this one should charge and connect to the interface for apple carplay and android auto this one is just charging you also have a wireless nfc charging pad for your phone so you can just throw it on there and it will start charging your phone it is nice and grippy so your phone does not slide around when in there below that you have uh, another array of physical buttons for your heated and cooled seats heated steering wheel auto hold button a button to bring up your cameras this does have a 360 camera feature so you can see fully around the vehicle you can see your parking lines there for either side of the vehicle obviously if you put it into reverse you do get the backup camera and as you're pulling into a spot you will get the front facing camera another two buttons for heated and cooled seats for the passenger and then in the very middle is your drive mode select knob you can push it in and lock your center diff which is a great feature for a vehicle trying to be a little bit off-road but your drive modes you just twist this dial here and you'll see on the driver information screen you switch from normal to sport to snow which again might give you an indication of what this all-wheel drive system is meant to do and we'll get back to the driver information screen here in just a bit but let's move back from this and you'll notice we have no gear shifter yet we have a nice big open console here these can swing back in and give you a lot of space for storage cup holders there's storage in the armrest it's a decently padded nice armrest black leather unlike the elantra they didn't try to put an extra screen over here or anything this is just a cloth material to the left of the steering wheel you do get a few more interesting buttons for your lights, for your traction control, and a hill descent control button. You've got a button to pop your trunk and your electronic parking brake. Moving back a bit, you can see the fully leather steering wheel. You've got controls on the steering wheel. Kind of your basic controls there. Paddle shifters back here mounted to the steering wheel. All pretty standard. It's not really a flat bottom. You do have little grooves here for your hands but not a real thick steering wheel, not super sporty. Behind that steering wheel is the driver information display. You can toggle through different screens to see here. And as you saw, when you toggle through your drive modes, it does change it up a bit. All really great. And it's really clear, easy to see, no issues there. Let's move on and start talking about the gear shifter. So it is an all new design, not just new for Hyundai, but new for the entire industry your park is a button here on the side you twist it backwards to go into reverse twist it forward to go into drive you can twist it back just once and it's in neutral and it's a pretty good big stick here you can see the size of it versus the size of my hand basically and it's all shift by wire so it's all electronically controlled and while i do like companies removing a traditional gear shifter if it's shift by wire so you can free up space here we are getting to the point where reinventing the wheel uh so to speak on gear shifters is might be becoming a problem mazda's got new gear shifters acura and honda have different gear shifters now honda is getting new gear shifters toyota has different gear shifters not that there's anything the matter with this gear shifter particularly and if you own it you'll get used to it no issues 
it's just interesting as a automotive reviewer driving a bunch of different cars where traditionally you just got in and grabbed the gear shifter and went that uh, a lot of the vehicles nowadays all have a little bit different kinds of gear shifters. So you gotta pause a bit and uh, remember exactly what you're doing. This vehicle also has the sunroof, all power, back seats in here while I didn't jump back there for this video. They are decent. I rode back there a bit during our trip in South Carolina. I've had the kids now back there three wide while I've had this for this week. If you're using it as a family hauler, it's okay, especially if you have a smaller family. Obviously, if you have a bigger family, something a little bit bigger will definitely be better. But for the most part, I had no issues as a dad carting around kids to and from school, to and from activities, to and from grocery stores. And with that, I think it's time to get on to the drive of this vehicle. Start talking about the way that it drives and what I think about that 1.6 liter turbocharged engine. And then we'll start wrapping it up after that with some money talk and uh, competition talk and some of my final thoughts. Let's just keep going. All right, let's put it into gear by twisting the odd gear shifter. And uh, let's start going. And after driving a lot of EVs or hybrids or plug-in hybrids, this thing immediately goes with the gas engine. Obviously it's only a gas engine. And I only mention it because I have driven so many hybrids or plug-in hybrids or EVs lately that uh, <laughs> it can be odd. But I will say that the 1.6 liter turbo with its 190 horsepower doesn't sound like a lot and quite frankly doesn't feel like a lot of power. It's not a lot of power, but it's suited well for the size of vehicle, for the weight of the vehicle. We can put it into that sport mode. It livens up the throttle response a bit. Maybe makes it sound a little bit better, but still, quite frankly, it's not a super powerful vehicle as far as sportiness goes. And if you try not to drive it like a sports vehicle, it feels perfectly fine. One of the things that I didn't give this vehicle enough credit for during the initial first drive was just how great the engine, transmission, steering feel, and road presence is in this vehicle. It was always one of my favorite things about the original Kona that compared to other vehicles in this class with their small turbocharged engines, but also a CVT transmission, or just not having enough power for the weight of the vehicle. The Kona has always felt solid and it still really does. It's even more front of mind for me currently because I just got done reviewing a few other vehicles and uh, there have been a couple of vehicles that I have said, I just don't like the engine transmission or hybrid systems in those vehicles. One of them I'll go ahead and tell you was the CX-90 from Mazda. While the vehicle's great, its big downfall to me is more the uh, driving with the engine option that they have, at least the one that I drove. You'll have to watch that video if you want some more insight into that. But jumping into the Kona, the 1.6 turbo really feels almost like a naturally aspirated larger engine. You get the power, there is some turbo lag, but uh, there's no sense that there's just not enough power, that it's struggling to keep up with the vehicle. It's just a really great power plant, nice transmission, and a good drive and I uh, can't give it any more praise than that. Again, if you wanna take it off-road, H-Track system is decent. We've done a couple of light off-roading events using the H-Track system in different vehicles. I've had the Kona previous generation off-road a bit, but as you saw with the drive modes, it's more a snow situation, icy situations. Loose gravel is fine. It's going up steep hills with loose gravel where it struggles a lot more, but there are plenty of videos out there where it can do it. And if you do put beefier tires on this than just the all season road tires, it will be a lot better. Speaking of off-roading, the ground clearance 
in this vehicle is 6.9 inches in the front wheel drive model and 8.3 inches in the rear wheel drive model. Definitely worth knowing if you are taking this off-road. What's also really good in here is the fuel economy. With this 1.6 liter, you're looking at 24 miles per gallon city, 29 highway with a combined of 26 miles per gallon. And throughout the week we've been driving it, I've constantly seen 25 to 26, even over 26 miles to the gallon. Now I have done a lot of idling as we're doing video around it and talking. I've done some pushing the vehicle in sport mode. And I have no doubt if you own this thing and drive it just like you would any other normal day-to-day -day drive, you can easily achieve that 26 miles to the gallon. And I think that's great. It's no hybrid with 40 miles to the gallon, but it drives so much better and it's easy and constantly getting the 26. You of course do have all the safety features of any Hyundai out right now, especially in this limited. You've got radar guided cruise control, got lane keeping assist, you've got sensors all around, you've got the 360 cameras, and a ton of other safety features from Hyundai that are kind of just a given in the market today, especially buying the limited trim, the top of the line, which normally I wouldn't recommend the top of the line trim when buying a vehicle. I'd always look at kind of the mid-grade trim, but I'm a big fan of the styling of the Limited over the inline. And I'm obviously a big fan of that 1.6 liter engine and the eight-speed automatic transmission. So to get that, you have to either get the inline or the uh, Limited trim. And out of those two, I do like the Limited trim more. Of course, that's gonna cost you. So let's go ahead and uh, find a place. I'll pull back over, talk about the price. And then I'll give you some of my final thoughts and we'll uh, wrap up the video there. All right, and after that, let's go ahead and talk quickly about the price then we'll jump out and start talking about the competition and some of my final thoughts and we'll wrap this up. The base Kona comes in at $24,100. Sounds great, great starting price for the type of vehicle that this is. I have driven a base Kona in the previous uh, design, the previous generation. Not a huge fan of the CVT that they're getting in it now. That 2.4 liter engine is okay, but it's kind of let down by the CVT. I haven't driven the newest Kona in its SE trim or SEL. I've only driven the inline and uh, this limited. That's both for this week and our uh, trip that we did. So while I'd like to recommend that vehicle, I do think you should step up to the inline or the limited for the 1.6 liter turbocharged engine. This one that I'm sitting in now, the limited with all the specs, basically spec'd out, all wheel drive and everything, is $34,695. So almost $35,000 for a fully equipped Kona. Compared to what you're seeing in the market right now, I think that's a good price. Like I said, let's jump out. I'll give you some of my final thoughts and talk about the competition and we'll wrap this thing up. All right, so at the end of the week, let's take a look at this as we always do from a perspective of a potential customer buying this. If you're looking at the compact crossover field, there are a ton of options and a ton of great options. A lot of the things that hamper this field in particular are the engine and transmission choices. Most of them have uh, not great engines or they're matched up with a CVT transmission, which kind of hurts the driving of this. And I think that's one of the places that the Kona has always shined in uh, how well it drives for being in the segment and having that 1.6 liter turbocharged engine really feels like a larger naturally aspirated. That's what a lot of the lower displacement turbocharged engines claim. It doesn't always deliver that way. This one does. Like I said, I've been a fan of the Kona for a long time, and it's probably my number one take out of this segment. You could also look at the Subaru Crosstrek, which I also really like. The Kia Seltos is a fine vehicle, but I do prefer the Kona more. And again, there's a ton of vehicles out there that this could compete with, but my recommendation would be to look at this. If you're doing day-to-day -day driving, perfectly fine no issues, wouldn't even worry about the all-wheel drive unless you live in a snowy area or always going down like dirt trails or something like that, even then probably don't need it. If you do want this and you're doing camping trips or going off-road a little bit, put some beefier tires on it 
and you should be pretty solid. But it's definitely a thumbs up recommendation from me. Interested to know what your thoughts are. Has anybody out there owned one of the previous Konas? Anybody already bought this thing or cross shopping it with something else that have questions? Leave those down in the comments. Let me know what you think. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up button. It really helps and I would appreciate it. If you're really into automotive reviews, we do a different review every week. Subscribe to the channel in that case because uh, you'll like the content that we bring. You should also go check out TXGarage.com where we do a lot of written reviews as well as event and news coverage over there from a lot of great authors, not just myself. Really worth checking out. But with that, that's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching.